Hi everybody, today I am joined by Philipp Brunberg, who has 10 years of experience in freelancing and creating data-driven application. His expert level in Spark and Spark with Scala. He also worked for large companies like Allianz, O2, Deutsche Börse and a lot of startup programs. He has a YouTube channel and a blog and he's also a teacher for Spark. So let's have a chat. Hi, Philip. Hey, Andreas. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah. Um, maybe we start with that you tell us a bit about yourself. Yes, of course. So yeah, my name is Philip. Andreas said most of the interesting things already. Um, I've been a freelancer for 10 years and um, have been developing Spark and a lot of other technologies in the big data fields across the year. Um, and recently I've pivoted a little bit into developer education. Um, I saw the needs because in many projects I just felt that most of the developers using big data technologies have never um, enjoyed proper education in the technologies they're supposed to use. And I thought I could help here a little bit teaching um, for for the beginning Apache Spark um, and also the other things. But um, I really have a focus on understanding the the internal concepts of the technologies and developing yeah a broad understanding what we're supposed to do so that we can develop high quality um, code and also be efficient while developing. And that's, yeah, that's probably here, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You mentioned Spark. Uh, that is that is one of the main topics that you teach. It's a super important topic. A lot of, a lot of people are using it. As you said, a lot of people need uh, education in it. Can you tell us a bit what is Spark? Yes, happy to do so. Um, actually, so for, first and foremost, I would say that Spark is yeah quite an impressive piece of engineering. So we use it for distributed data processing and analytics. And there's a huge trend going away from uh, vertically scaled machines and data warehouses to data lakes, which are much cheaper and in the cloud and uh, where we can store huge data amounts of data in, in file format. And data lakes, they don't have a processing layer, and that's where Spark comes in. So Spark actually is the processing layer on data lakes, so large, large data sets. And yeah, it's an impressive piece of engineering, as I said, because actually we, we are using a declarative API to tell it how, how we would like to transform the data and what we would like to do uh, from the semantics, but we're not implementing it directly and um, procedural. But rather, we tell the framework what, what we want to do with the data, and the framework actually makes sense of it and encapsulates the whole distributedness of the processing. So Spark can run on dozens of machines um, executing the same task, and the framework will actually take care of the whole, all the parallelism. And yeah, as it knows the semantics of the query, it can also have um, yeah automatic optimizations and so on. So. There's a lot of complexity and yeah, it's very widely used these days. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think is this such an important skill to have nowadays? Yeah, I think um, the whole world is like producing data and every, every company wants to make sense of it and drive value from that, make better decisions, new products and so on. And as we have so massive data, we want to store it cheap and that's that's why we need spark and actually the the entire value generation so the implementation of the business logic the answering of the questions we want to drive from the data or derive from the data is implemented in spark so in many projects like in many big data projects it's qu quite an the central component where the questions or the value is generated from the data platform there are a lot of auxiliary tools that we need to get the data in place and so on. But usually the, the central logic, the implementation is in Spark and that's why it's so central in most data analytics projects. So for example, if, uh, my previous project or one of my previous projects was with a German stock exchange. 
where we basically analyze 5 billion transactions um, in a day, so every day. And we needed, we needed to check whether the transaction was actually valid and if the trader was registered and so on. So um, that's an actual application on top of big data, which was used for regulatory issues. And that's one example of, of applying Spark in big data. In which ways have you worked with Spark before? Yeah, usually I'm on the developing end. So usually I'm assigned tasks to implement the features to debug the performance of applications. Um, but also all of the yeah uh, surrounding tools like the CI CD or uh, managing the code, code reviews and so on. But most, most of the time I was assigned with actually implementing use cases using Spark with Scala usually. So from that experience, what do you think were some core pillars of learning Spark? Yeah, I would say there are three major components. The first one would be the very practical end where we need to learn how we, how we use the API, how we develop code, how we can tell the framework what we would like to do with the data. So really writing the code and knowing where to find answers to the questions, where the documentation is and so on. So that's the, the first part to be able to apply it. Um, then there's a second step, which goes deeper into understanding the internals of Spark, the execution model. How does it distribute our workload on the cluster? Um, how is the, the program transformed and executed internally? And how are the optimizations happening? And we need to understand that actually for the third part, which, which would be the advanced performance optimization. So when we are facing problems with runtimes or too much memory consumptions, we need to go into the program and then see where is the, the problem occurring? Why is the, is the application so resource in, intensive? And then we can reason about which would be a better solution, how we could refine or refactor the code so that it runs better. So that would be analyzing the performance issues and then solving them, which would be the third part of, of learning Spark in particular. Mm -hmm. hmm. And then once somebody has learned Spark, what, you, what would you say are the, the prospects for somebody with that skill? Yeah, actually, as, as I pointed out previously, um, as Spark is usually the central component in big data platforms, um, I would say, or from my, from my opinion or from my experience, it's the central, it's the central knowledge point that is required for most data engineering jobs. So nine out of 10 jobs, I would say have the requirement that, you know, spark, and then some other technologies, which we, which you will use together if, if it's, um, Kafka or airflow, uh, flow or Delta Lake or iceberg or whatever, <clears throat> usually as the code, the implementation goes in Spark, it's the, it's the most, most prominent requirement for data engineering jobs. So it will enable you to find a, a good job in data engineering. And if you learn it to a very high proficiency to like a, a top level, um, yeah, you will be ahead of, of most other data engineers who have never studied it, um, deliberately. So. It, it will make you it, it will make it easy to find a job in data engineering which is well, well paid and probably it's going to be quite easy to find one mm -hmm. i would guess yeah i would argue so you used it for a long time now you're teaching it how are you teaching it yeah um i think or i created a methodology which i think is most effective for learning a new skill and could be any skill for example spanish or salsa or whatever or data engineering or apache spark i think there are three major components if you if you want to learn a new skill the first one being the the theory the theoretical knowledge and that's why i created a video course um teaching many of the things how to use spark and so on but the second part is to practice it, to use it, to get your hands dirty and on the keyboard, develop your applications um, so that you gain experience. 
And then the crucial part, in my, in my opinion, is to get some one-on-one -on -one feedback. And that's the same for learning a language, in my, uh, in my opinion, because if I have a conversation on the streets, um, my, my conversation partner will not correct me. The, the goal is to get information across. So I will say something in Spanish and they will reply and we will try to exchange information. But as soon as you get a private instructor or private teacher, he will correct every mistake you make in every sentence you say, which because there the goal is not to exchange information, but rather to improve your Spanish. And then there happens a lot of learning because you actually know then when you make mistakes and also it increases your confidence because um, you know if he doesn't correct you, you haven't made a mistake, which you wouldn't know if you said anything correctly in a street conversation. And I think the same is true for, yeah, learning Apache Spark. And that's why I set up this uh, this two component course, actually. So the one, the one track would be an on-demand video course. And the second or accompanying um, track is individual coaching sessions where where I would review the code of the participant and give him actual feedback how he could do it differently and also tell him if he had done something like great or correctly. And that's that's my current approach. And I created uh, one online training like this for Apache Spark with Scala. And I would try to yeah get it across to as many students as possible. Cool. That's, that's very good. Very nice um, initiative. For the students that are interested in this, what are some prerequisites that they should come with before they start your training? Yeah, so the course that I set up initially or that I set up now is to doesn't require any knowledge in Spark yet. However, it's not designed for teaching programming altogether. So the students should have at least experience in at, in at least one object oriented language, I would say doesn't matter which one it is because the concepts are repeating in most of the languages they don't differ too much but from there we have a good foundation so that we can start programming in spark and yeah the the language basics and the language skills we will get along actually mm -hmm. so they can come with coding skills not a lot of knowledge for spark or almost no knowledge for spark how far can they go with your training Yeah, they can, I, I would say, after completing this 12 weeks, my goal is to bring them to a level where they are in the top half of the development teams that are out there. So I've been working in many development teams um, and I know the, the experience levels and, and knowledge levels of Spark developers, but on completion of this 12-week um, program, I want to bring them so that they're in the top half of the engineering teams with their skill set. Cool. Um, where can people find you and your program, Philip? So most importantly, I think on LinkedIn, um, I have everything under my name. So it's Philip Brunnenberg. You can find me there on LinkedIn. I, I try to post valuable posts there all the time. And the second part would be my academy, which I founded at or created at academy.philip-bronenberg.de I think you can find the links in the show notes later yep. and yeah I think these are the two the two platforms where we can find me okay yeah I'm going to put the links in the description of this video and then people can check that out um, yeah Philip thanks for being here thanks for having this chat thank you Andreas thanks for inviting me